Next up on our uh, lightning round sessions is Sherry Breachin. Breachin? Oh, I didn't ask how you pronounce. Did I pronounce that correctly? That's okay. It's Breachin. Breachin. Ah, I need to add. Um, from right. on Alaska, Texas, um, public library down there, and she has. Um, Many libraries have special collections of, of items that they lend, and she has a Cake at the Lake program um, uh, that she um, has there. So I'm just going to hand over to you to tell us about what you're doing down there. Thank you, Christina. We lend bakeware here at Alaska. Um, so I invite any of you that want to, that are in Texas, to come have cake with us at the lake. Um, on Alaska, Texas is located on a peninsula that extends into Lake Livingston. We are west of Livingston and east of Huntsville on US Highway 190. We're nestled in a really pretty setting that's surrounded by the piney woods of East Texas. The lake was constructed back in 1969 by the city of Houston. It helps um, um, with their hydroelectric plant. Um, and we are the second largest lake in Texas. Uh, Houston is just a little more than an hour south of Onalaska, so that kind of gives you an, you know, an idea of where we are in the United States. Um, and these are pictures from our website, so if you happen to, to Google us, those are the pictures that you're going to want to see. Um, so because of our location in the heart of Lake Livingston, we have become a popular vacation and recreational area here, and we have um, a great retirement community. Uh, despite its growth, Onalaska still remains a small town quality with country atmosphere. When I first started coming here, um, back in the late uh, 1990s, just as a vacation spot, um, we had about 800 people. And officially, we have uh, 1,700 now, but we really service close to 3,000. Since a large uh, percentage of our population is retired and weekenders, many spend their time here relaxing by the water or just fishing or making memories with their friends and family. Uh, the shot that you can see right now is of a fishing tournament that's ready to begin, and that's the sun rising off of one of the piers that's here at the lake. And that's actually just a really small inlet in the in the lake. Um, it doesn't. It's hard to show the whole uh, the whole lake. Um, so we decided that once you drive um, over an hour from Houston, who wants to go back just for a cake pan? So we decided to share what we could have, um, uh, what others might have in the community. Um, so, and that way you wouldn't have to drive back. So people can stop by the library and choose from over 65 cake pans that we have now. We have lots to pick from. We have simple ones. Um, or we have some that are more elaborate if you're um, uh, celebrating a special occasion. So here's one of the simple ones that we have. It's just a bunt pan. Um, this particular one um, is very heavy, and so cakes always turn out really well out of that one. Um, and it's one of our more popular bakewares. Um, but if you were having some sort of uh, anniversary party or something like that, you can um, not only check out the cake pans, but this tier that's here that um, uh, and the candles and you know and the whole thing. So you could actually have you know a really nice little party if you were going to do that. Um, we also have some cookie cutters, and I didn't list all of our cookie cutters, but um, these are one of the most popular. And this is actually some gingerbread cookies that someone made. Well, I always just ask them to share their pictures with us if they will. All of our um, bags that include the, uh, the cake pan, they all come with really simple recipes and easy to find ingredients. Um, and I did this so that you would have to, or you could, read uh, the directions. So I'm, I'm always promoting reading in one way or another. Um, you can, of course, choose uh, to plan ahead and bring you know all of your own ingredients and, and have fancy decorations and all but you can also do the, the more simpler ones. We have character pans if you're doing a birthday celebration for a child or holiday themed ones. We have some 3D ones um, as well. 
So we just ask that people come and make memories uh, with their friends and their family without a lot of expense and just come have cake at the lake. Um, we've also had people that have come in and um, met other residents there and so they, you know, one will invite them over and um, we even had a cookie share in one of our subdivisions. And not everybody uh, rented the uh, cookie cutters from us, but some of them did. Now I would suggest that if libraries are planning to offer a collection like bakeware, that one of the first things you have to do, obviously, is decide how it's going to work better for you. You know, when you consider your circulation times, um, it doesn't take a week to bake cookies, but we kept our um, circulation rules very simple, and we followed the same seven-day plan that we already had in place for DVDs and audiobooks. This way, we weren't investing a lot of time in um, changing uh, our computer system. I just kept it really, really simple. We use social media to get the word out, as well as display um, uh, photos that uh, people send us. Um, we always ask them for permission, and almost always, if they share, you know, a picture with us, they're going to give us permission to share it with everybody else as well. Um, and then sometimes we just go ahead and display the, the cookie cutters or the cake pans, especially if it's seasonal. We'll display them right there on the circulation desk and we'll, I'll have people say, I didn't know you had this. I, I hear that like all the time. Um, we found it's best to make the, the um, to make it really clear to the patrons, the checkout dates, the returns, and what we expect for them when they come back in. So we label each bag with a little label and it says, please wash before you use and wash and dry after their return. I always check them when they come back in and if there's still some creepy crumbs in there, we just wash them again. And every once in a while somebody will bring in um, a sample of you know, what they had. They'll bring me a piece of cake or they'll bring me some cookies. And that's really nice. Um, we just wanted to add new services for our community and to get people to, you know, come into the library that might not otherwise um, have visited with us. Because people just think that we're still just books. So when we tell people what we're doing, um, it captures their attention. Um, and in the future, I'd love to have, um, maybe we could lend fishing poles or bicycles. Um, there is a neighboring town that lends bicycles, and um, we do have some proposals, although I don't know if they'll happen or not, but for bike, uh, bike tracks around our, um, here in our community. And if that happens, then I'm definitely going to apply for grants um, so that we can have some bicycles that we can uh, uh, check out as well. Of course, once people are inside the library, then they found out about other pop popular services that we have, like a notary service, Wi-Fi, DVDs, and of course, we have books. And that's the end of my presentation. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, great, Sherry. Um, I thought this is a, a great thing that you do. The cake at the lake as your as the as the theme of this whole thing. Um, <laughs> there are lots of small libraries and rural libraries around the country. I know, and we have them here in Nebraska um, that do share uh, cake pans, uh, loan cake pans. Um, and it, it's very interesting when you do talk about it. There, are, um, the there's the it's like a 50-50, the people that say, oh, yeah, of course, library lends cake pans, so does ours. And then the other librarians or even you know, people I know saying, what? Say, what? Why? Right. And like, <laughs> think about it. Those, 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 all those character pans, if you want to make one of those kind of cakes, just needing to go out and buy one of those? No. Exactly. Like having the library, have them all collected together is often. And having, because you have, you are like a, a, a tourist destination, definitely is an awesome yes. thing to offer. You know, you can come here to celebrate your child's birthday or your anniversary or something, and then you can make something here. Um, right. Someone did say that you said that you do also, you will also provide the ingredients for the different um, recipes that you have. We don't provide the ingredients. Okay. Um, we don't provide any consumables, but we just give a list of really simple ingredients, and I try to make sure that I have recipes that have um, things that 
they can find in our local grocery store or that they may already have on hand. I think that's what it was. You had said you, you, you'll give them a recipe of different choices of recipes that they can use along with these. So they don't have right. to think about what, what am I going to make, that that can all be provided when they come. Right. And there's grocery stores nearby that they can easily get to to yes. get what they need. Yeah. Um, so we do have some people say that loving the idea is people are really hooked onto this bicycle lending, <laughs> it seems. <now. laughs> um, if you do do that, you'll have to come back and tell us about how that goes, apparently. Um, okay, that, is that sounds it, great. Loving the idea of checking out the bicycles and connecting them to a bike trails or tracks that you might have, um, hopefully, if they do get those going. Um, somebody wants to know if you know about the you – said, you said that a neighbor library does check out bikes? Yes, and in, well, I, I said neighboring library. They're actually in a neighboring county. Um, okay. There's a Lake Conroe, and so the Montgomery County Library um, has those as well. Mm -hmm. And from what I understand, they're not the only library across the country, but they're the only other one that we know of in our area mm -hmm. that does that. Mm -hmm. And we're the only one in our area that lends cake pans. That does the cake pans, yeah. So people will come to you for that. Awesome. Um, Oh, and here's someone else. You're looking for other interesting things. Someone here says they actually love an electric food dryer, a food dehydrator that they loan out, and a pressure cooker. Oh. Anything that's – Oh, that's thing, great. That's something the libraries can think of. Anything that is not something that you'd use regularly, but you'd be like a once-a-year thing or, you know, randomly, that's a good thing right. to offer um, up um, place. I know there's some, like, two – People do tools, but and I know there's organizations that will rent you these things. But as the library, you could do this um, at, for free to um, absolutely as long as they're yeah. Um, pedometer, so somebody cool. loans. Yep. All right, I think we'll uh, move on to our next lightning round session. We want to get through all of these. Thank you very much, Sherry. That was very interesting. Thank you. Um, very cool to hear Thank about you. how you guys are doing it there at your library. All right, I've learned a lot today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Stick around. I got a whole bunch, a whole afternoon full of sessions yet to go. <laughs>